going to start off with a couple of questions, which, um, yeah, we're going to sort of group them together. Basically, there was quite a big reaction to our story last week, uh, where essentially Mark Surdy asked, uh, answered rather a bunch of questions we had about Project Amethyst and the relationship between PSSR and um, FSR4. Um, the upshot being that next year we should expect to see a variation, a re-implementation of FSR4 for PlayStation 5 Pro, and that will be the next evolution of PSSR. Uh, lots of people basically saying, well, you know, PSSR is dead. <laughs> FSR4 is taking over. It's a disaster for Sony. Quite baffling reactions, I have to say. Uh, let's uh, talk about these questions, though. Bespoke exclamation point asks, crazy how even supposedly respectable journalists, like a not-to-be-named The Verge reporter, tried twisting what Mark Surdy said about PSSR into, quote, unquote, it failed, so now we are uh, switching to FSR4. The way I see it, FSR 3 equals DS DLSS 1, PSSR equals DLSS 2, FSR 4 <laughs> better than DLSS 3, PSSR 2 equals DLSS 3. I'm not sure that's my take. Hierarchy is interesting. It's, a, yeah. it's certainly an, an interesting take. I think that uh, uh, by the time we get DLSS 5, FSR 5, 6, <laughs> PSSR 3, 4, the super res resolution part of these upscalers will be indistinguishable from native. No real question. Don't know why I bothered then. Um, just making an observation, <laughs> but can we give a heck yes for Oliver seemingly moving <laughs> above ground? <laughs> You're always above ground, Oliver. I don't think that's. Uh, I'd just like to think so. You, you just yeah, record. I mean, at, you just record at nights, don't you? That's the bottom line. I do. It's very. It's what two a.m. here. It's three a.m. here. Quite late. Oh my god. Um, anyway, we got this question, and it is actually a question from uh, Darjarko in brackets. Dan. Uh, happy half not ha happy half fortnight, gents! Exclamation point! I've been reading Sony's comments closely and comparing them to the stated figures for the RDNA4 GPUs. It seems that in order to compare RDNA4 GPUs correctly with the Pro, we must determine that the quote unquote dense tops for Int8 are what the dense tops are. Rather, according to the 9000 series wiki page and a few other sources, 9070 has 289 Int8 dense tops and the 9070 XT has 389 int 8 dense tops. It would seem that all the AMD marketing for the new GPUs uses the comically inflated int 4 sparse figures, with Surly also stating that sparse, sparsity is not especially important for the kind of models that they are using for PSSR. It would seem as though the PS5 Pro sits between the new AMD mid-range cards in terms of dense int 8 tops performance. This is getting dense, isn't it? Um, it also seems conceivable that FSR4 would need to be performant on the rumoured lower stack cards, i.e. the 9050-9060. In light of all of this, all of this, uh, have we underestimated PS5 Pro or have Sony pissed on their chips? <laughs> okay, so we, let's talk about, first of all, I mean, first of all, we've got this question of timelines about the relationship between... Um, Sony and AMD and PSSR and FSR4. Now, correct me if I'm wrong, Alex. What? PSSR has been in development with Sony for like years, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And FSR4 was remarkably, some might say, um, seemingly done in around nine months or, or, or certainly in a much <laughs> shorter time period than PSSR. Right. So the narrative seems to be from the Mark Cerny side is that FSR4 is essentially a collaboration, bringing everybody's work together. Is that right? So one mm. might say that PSSR research over those years probably had an accelerating impact on FSR4 development, because it does seem quite unlikely that AMD would just produce this remarkably no. good upscaler so quickly and out of nowhere. Well, I mean, yes. I mean, I, I imagine there is a back and forth, but obviously AMD's uh, been hiring a lot of people in mm. the interim time to beef up their machine learning capacity, just like they hired a lot of people to beef up the ray tracing capacity of their yep. business. Um, like in between after RDNA 3 came out, it was like right around then. And I, you can just follow the LinkedIn <laughs> and get a sense of that. And you can also see that on the ML front as well, too. So I think it's like that kind of combination of things. Uh, but I think the timeline is the most important part. Um, the 
you know, like you said, they had a console that needed to come out at a certain time to be a bridging gap in terms of time between PS5 and PS6, just like the PS4 Pro was. And they needed to have something ready, even if AMD didn't have anything ready for them. So they, I think they rolled a lot of PSSR on their own initially. Um, and then maybe that some of that fed back into FSR4 development. Uh, the only one thing I, uh, in regards to the second question that I will just like contest in general is um, we already know from at least uh, NVIDIA side of things that they are, for that transformer model, they are no longer using integer math for that. It is floating point. I think it's relied mm -hmm. on their new FP8 performance, primarily unlocked with Ada Lovelace and Blackwell GPUs. So they scale really well with the transformer model. Whereas when you go down to the, the lower models, especially for the biggest ones, like ray reconstruction, which is huge, um, it performs a lot worse on, on those GPUs. This is the one thing that we don't really know about uh, with um, PS5 Pro and RDNA 4 is like, one, sparsity may not have anything to do with it, but in just general, mm -hmm. the question for me is like, does PS5 Pro even support sparsity? Who knows? Older NVIDIA GPUs didn't, right? Um, another thing is like, is FSR 4 reliant on this int 8, integer 8 maths to do the work that it needs to do? And we don't know that either. <laughs> uh, so it's a lot of guessing. Uh, I don't really know, but the, the 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 porting period to me seems really long uh, for something you know that arguably, if it was in between RDNA, the if it's performance that were that was the most important part is in between the levels of RDNA there, uh, the the ninety seventy and the ninety seventy XT. Well, then it seems like it would be a a simple porting process, but it's longer, and I think it may have to do with the specific maths that they use for it the mm -hmm. actual the way it's scaled or the fact that we're talking about an RDNA 2 RDNA 4 and 3 hybrid GPU with a completely different cache structure and everything and maybe it needs a lot more finessing to get in that than an RDNA 4 GPU even one that has less uh, theoretical ML performance, because maybe actually that is the limiting uh, aspect of performance, something that Oliver also talked to with Mark Cerny in his interview yeah. back then. So I don't know. I just think the porting period after the fact that they say in the beginning of 2025, is which is where we now, you'll see this in titles first in 2026. It's a pretty long time, actually. Uh, so it's not. A, it shouldn't then be an easy process. And the question is, why is it not an easy process? Yeah. From, from my understanding, like PSSR was really built around the capabilities of the PS5 Pro to be as like fused, as fully fused as possible to stay on the on-die memory there. So that was like a significant issue for them. And I think when you look at FSR 4, it's not, it's not even clear if FSR 4 is fully a CNN model. There's some rumblings that it might have a transformer component and getting that all accelerated in a performant manner on a PS5 Pro, which has this very bizarre hybrid architecture that's based in RDNA 2, but it has the RT yeah. performance from um, from uh, RDNA 4, has some elements from RDNA 3 as well. That's obviously a very complicated situation there. There are a lot of things we don't know ultimately, but I do think that um, the, the time period that, that is being suggested here in terms of time to implement FSR 4's neural network for PSSR certainly does suggest that they have a lot of work left to do. And indeed, they're kind of tentative about it, like it's their aim necessarily, but not necessarily something they're promising to end users. Mm, yeah, I mean, you know, just looking at the original announcement from AMD, it was uh, excited for the co-development with Sony Interactive Entertainment on the models used for the FSR upscaler. So it does sound as though it was a widely, you know, a, a wide collaboration as part of Amethyst. You know, it seems pretty straightforward, right? Mm -hmm. um, yeah, in terms of this scalability, scalability, I mean, the thing that struck me, Alex, uh, was that it is quite a heavy computational load, FSR4. Mm -hmm. I mean, obviously, there is an acceleration element to it because you're operating from a lower resolution, right? But in terms of the question being asked here about, um, you know, the 9050 and 9060, um, well, yeah, the simple solution to that is that you're likely to be upscaling to like 1080p or 1440p on those cards, yep. right? Which means Crazy. that the computational cost drops way down on that. 
So it shouldn't be a problem. Where things become more interesting uh, from my perspective is how this would work on a prospective uh, handheld implementation or mobile iGPU implementation, let's say, um, for, you know, an RDNA 4 based GPU, which, you know, I think that's one of the key objectives that AMD has with uh, FSR 4. Maybe it will be a different model, uh, you know, a lighter model. We've seen it work before. Um, who knows? But that's kind of the, the situation there. Yeah. But the, the top situation there, I mean, Mark Cerny did seem to indicate that it's broadly comparable with, with these new cards. Um, but that's quite interesting because these cards are considerably more capable than the PS5 Pro in all other aspects. So mm -hmm. how that carries over to PlayStation kind of need a bit more detail there, I think.